The Melt by Susan Gordon, Short Stories for Kids. Today we have a book named The Melt by Susan Gordon, Short Stories for Kids. I think they're so pretty. I hope you guys really enjoy it. I love it. Please give this video a like if you enjoy it, and don't forget to subscribe for more stories. Thank you, reading. So, here we go. It seemed to happen all of a sudden. One minute I was planning an extension, a conservatory, and maybe an extra room when the warning signs appeared. I have to admit that we all saw the signs earlier on. My friends and relations were all suffering. Their homes were shrinking and gardens were in pools of water. I think we never thought this would happen. We held meetings and more meetings. Everybody had an opinion, suggestions, and different viewpoints. As polar bears, the Arctic is our home and we love it. Our children were happy and busy with their schoolwork. The crime rate is low and healthcare is free. What's not to like? We eat the fresh fish that we catch offer advice when it is called for, and even have regular prayer session. There wasn't anything bothering us until we had the melt. Our ice homes were just disappearing, and it was scary. Every week our friends who live up north deliver the post. The Polar Times is always a favorite, but apart from weather warnings and fish recipes, there was no mention of this melting business. We couldn't consider who was responsible or why it was happening. Peter and Simon, our oldest and most respected polar bears, couldn't figure this out. However, Peter did have a bright idea. Maybe this had something to do with people rushing about. We all knew that people existed. Whilst on nature walks with the children, one or two of us smelled the smoke coming from the chimney where the scientists live. Simon says that he's seen them outside their hut, always measuring things. Peter has counted four people. They were smaller than us, and they all had beards and wore jumpers. Perhaps the answer to all our questions could be answered by them? The weekly post was late this week. I had a postcard from a pen pal in Alaska and a letter from a cousin in Sweden. They were both complaining about the melts in their countries, too. Some were thinking of moving up north, but it seems the schools are already full up. Simon and Peter sat up late at night discussing the problem. If we wanted to ask for the scientists' help, how could we communicate? Of course, our smelling and hearing senses were marvelous. We could fish and have meals on the table in no time. But we couldn't talk to people, and they might be frightened, because we are so big. The problem went round and round. Then suddenly, an answer appeared. Thomas, a very bright polar teenager, had just come home from college. We are all fluent in reading, writing, and speaking polar talk. However, no one knows people talk except Thomas and a couple of his friends and his teacher. Thomas decided to write on big pieces of cardboard so that the scientists could advise us. We wanted to know why our homes were melting and who was responsible. We called our mission, Save Our Snow and Ice Sozy. It took quite some time to decide what to write. We didn't want to frighten the scientists so we decided to write the signs and leave them near their hut. The first one said, Save our life. Stop the melting was the second one, and the last one was, We will go down fighting. The scientists were simply amazed. We could hear laughter and chatter, and we thought that messages were sent all over the world. The people tried to get closer to us, but we polar bears don't really trust people much. The Polar Times was all full of the news. The people had been alerted. All their cars, 
trains and airplanes had been heating the earth. More scientists came to measure and discuss the problem. Books were written, and clubs were formed to tell everyone about the Arctic bears. Governments were concerned, and laws were made. Our pictures were in the papers, and even the Queen sent us a thank-you postcard. School kids gave up their learning on Fridays just to demonstrate to the world about saving the planet. Cars have been banned in some cities and buses and vans, too. It appears that people are so much more healthy. They walk and ride bicycles and eat plant food. Still, we polar bears are keeping our paws crossed, and long may the healthy life continue. We may have found a solution to the melting. Let's hope so. The scientists are very friendly, too. They have stopped their central heating and seem to walk around with more jumpers on. This, it seems, is a good sign, and maybe the snow and ice won't melt. The End Good job, friends. Thank you so much for reading with me. Bye, I'll see you next time.